before I uh, speak about um, uh, my announced topic, I just want to uh, express my gratitude to the whole program, but especially to the fellows who've been coming back and, and uh, being in my seminars and putting up with me. Uh, I just want to say what I get out of it uh, in a very selfish way. Um, at the end of each summer that I've led a seminar, um, I'm required to produce a curriculum unit. Uh, in fact, I'm required to produce two uh, for each of my courses. Uh, they uh, stretch the semester, and I have to have my bibliography and all my uh, plans uh, in place. And um, the thing that I bring with me from the fellows um, is uh, a spirit and a skill of teaching that sometimes uh, some of us might be become detached from uh, in a university setting. I know I have. And I want to say a few words about what they remind me of uh, each time I've had the privilege of leading a seminar. Um, and that is that um, education at its root means to draw out, not to pour into. William Butler Yeats put it this way. It's about um, starting a fire, not filling a pail. And there's a content in the students that when it's drawn out, enlivens all the other things that we have to teach them. When you get that spark, when you see that they own and are invested uh, in the material, um, that's when I think at any level it's safe to say um, a class will come alive. So thank you, my fellows. Uh, I want to start with an acronym, it's STEM, and uh, I'm very uh, glad to celebrate the success of STEM uh, and uh, even urge it on to uh, greater heights. But I have another acronym I want to share with you. It's STEAM. Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. What? STEAM. Even better, yes. But Mary gives me the chance to rope in the humanities, which was really my intent. I was going to say I'm sp speaking about arts on a humanities uh, panel, but to me they're inextricably bound because arts are humanities with laboratories. It's a place where the uh, students get on their feet. It's the place where, as I said before, they can take ownership in a special way of the work because often they're not only uh, studying the masterworks and brilliant um, creations that have come before, as they should, but they're also making their own and adding to it. Uh, they're not only listening for the story and hearing the story, they're able to make the story their own and retell it in their own terms. And uh, I think this, this uh, in, in my experience anyway, um, has been, uh, it's a real opportunity to have taught uh, in the arts and humanities. It's been a real opportunity actually to have been completely confused about what my appointments are at any given time. Am I supposed to be at uh, this meeting in the theater studies or in that one in, in English? And that is a privilege in itself because um, uh, I think that it's safe to say there's a concern about the role of the humanities today, a concern about the status of the humanities uh, at all levels. And uh, I read not too long ago uh, what to me is a very comforting, indeed inspiring statistic. And that is, uh, despite all the discussions and the quantitative measurements of the decline of the humanities in number of majors, enrollments and courses, and the like, if you put arts and humanities together as fields, as I think it's a, a, a exciting thing to do when you can, if you put them together as fields in terms of numbers, there's been really no decline since 1970 in the number of students uh, majoring and enrolled in those subjects. And I just propose uh, uh, here uh, an alliance, uh, an interdisciplinary connection, a subversive strategy of working together for um, uh, the best interests of the students because it's important for them to have science, it's important for them to have mathematics, it's important to have all of that. But as Brandon said so eloquently when we began, uh, you have to know who you are. You have to know who you are as a human being. You have to imagine who other people are as human beings or you cannot be a fully educated person. Thank you so much. Thank you.